Dr. Ingrid Visser and I'm here in Miami to see Lolita the orca who's in captivity just over there. It's a real mission for me to be here in terms of a mission to get education out to the public about what's going on, but it's also a mission because I care about her. One of the reasons that I want to come and see Lolita is that I'm really concerned about the conditions that she's being kept in. You know, you hear that she's in a very small tank, you hear that she's got no environmental enrichment, nothing to do all day except for a couple of shows, and I really want to come and document that and use my expertise as a wild orca biologist and put that into perspective for people. A lot of the PR with these aquariums like SeaWorld, like Miami Sea Aquarium that keep whales and dolphins in captivity is they say that it's for educational purposes. But I just can't see how it's education. You know, if it was education, we've had 40 years of it. Why do we still have to have them in captivity? Surely we'd be educated enough by now. You know, as adults, we have grown up with these animals in captivity, so we should be the ones that are shutting it down now. As a scientist, I find it something that I have to do to try and help these animals. From a personal point of view, it's not just a mission of passion, it's also a mission of compassion. I mean, I knew this was small, but this small? On an average day when I'm out with orca in the wild, I can follow them for five to eight hours. And I can follow them over easily 50 kilometers. And in that time frame, I would see them typically sleeping, hunting, socializing. They would be food sharing. They would obviously be traveling during that time frame. And yet when you see an orca in captivity, you see them just either lying there despondently or you see what's termed stereotypic behaviours. And those are abnormal, repetitive behaviours. So that might be chewing on the concrete, it might be swimming in a circle. People are used to seeing animals like bears or tigers pacing up and down. You see exactly the same thing with whales and dolphins when you know what to look for. They just go round and round the tank. They typically surface at exactly the same spot. And the fact that these animals can't travel, they're confined within these tiny little blue cylinders is really, really difficult to watch. So this is very typical stereotypic behavior. Just head lifting like that. When you look at an orca in the wild compared to an orca in captivity, there's this huge difference. I mean, it's, it's literally indescribable. So as a biologist, I try my best to explain to people where those differences lie, but you can never really explain to someone unless they've seen them in the wild. And that's the hard bit because most people want that instantaneous gratification. They want that guarantee of seeing an animal, so they go to see them in captivity. Yet in reality, when they see them in captivity, they're not seeing the same thing. So I just went in to see Lolita and I know the facts. I mean, 
I know exactly the dimensions of the tank. I know the dimensions of her. But when you actually see it, you realise how tragically small that tank is. So there's a very robust plan in place to help Lolita retire. It involves training her for simple things like being able to move in a bigger environment and to be able to catch live fish again. And we would never just throw her out into the ocean and just say, right, you're on your own sunshine. So the idea with the rehabilitation plan is that she would be retired into a little secluded cove that would be netted off. And that would give her the ocean experience, but on a small scale so that she wouldn't be frightened. She'd have rocky bottom, pebbles, seaweed, fish, and the currents and the waves, all of those things that should be what she should have in her natural life, not in the sea circus that she's having to do here, purely for people's entertainment. You're using an animal that's just basically a facsimile, a, a puppet of what a real orca is. It's just tragic that she's been kept in there in that torturous environment for this long. If I could meet with the owner of the aquarium and he was actually open to listening, I would say to him, what are you thinking? You wouldn't treat your children that way. You wouldn't even treat your dog that way. Why do you treat a sentient, caring animal with a brain that's as intelligent as yours this way? You know, have a heart. You've spent 40 years making money off this animal. You know, the only way Lolita's going to retire otherwise is if she dies.